Okay, in this video we're going to continue with our classic Pong recreation. What we've already done from the first part is drawn our court, our ball, our players, and we've made player 2 move with the arrow keys and player 1 move with W and S. Next up is we're going to make this ball move. So we actually have to make the ball kind of have its own little physics. We're going to have the ball change its direction in both the horizontal X direction, the Y vertical direction, and be affected by a speed. So we need to start with a couple variables. So up in global, under our ball, let's make a new variable called ball speed, which I'm going to set to be five. Variable called ball direction x, which is going to be one, and ball direction y, which is also going to be one. Now ball speed is just the speed that our ball moves, and you can of course change this or customize this. Ball direction x is the direction it's moving in the x direction. One would be right, negative one would be left, and ball direction y is the direction that the ball is going in the vertical direction. One would be down, negative one would be up. Now, the first thing to do is actually make these variables mean something. So make our ball x and our ball y be impacted by these variables. So let's go down to our draw function here. And we're going to make a new little subsection called physics. And what we're going to say is that our ball x is now going to be ball x plus ball direction x times ball speed. Move horizontally. Okay, so if we push play, our ball is now traveling horizontally. Let's add a vertical direction by saying ball y is equal to ball y plus ball direction y times ball speed. Move vertically. So now that we have a horizontal and a vertical direction, we should actually move diagonally. And we do, and honestly we're moving a little quick. Let's change our ball speed to be two. There we go. That's looking a little bit more classic. Now we don't bounce. Now what we need to do is if we hit the bottom wall or the top wall, we bounce. If we hit a paddle, we bounce. And if we go off either end, meaning that somebody missed, we actually return to the center and get a point. Let's start with our top and our bottom walls. Then we'll add in the paddles and go from there. So we're gonna make a new section in our draw called collisions. All right, and we're going to say with walls. If ball y is greater than or equal to height, that means we've hit bottom wall. And to do that, we have to change our y direction. So we're going to say that ball direction y is equal to ball direction y times negative 1. And that's going to change direction. like so. Let's close this if statement. So we're going to say close greater than h for greater than height. Hit play and let's see what happens when we hit. And we do. We bounce. Perfect. Now for the top wall, it's very similar. It's going to be if ball y is less than or equal to zero. And that's going to be hit top wall ball direction y is going to equal ball direction y times negative one, which of course is then going to change its direction. And we're gonna say close less than zero. Now we can't necessarily test this because we can't bounce off the paddles unless we change our y direction. So if I go up to global and if we make our ball direction y, uh, actually no matter what we, well, let's try it. If we make our ball direction y negative one, here, it should go to the top wall, and it does, and it bounces. All right, now paddle collisions are a little bit more tricky because the paddles move. So because the paddles move, we basically have to make an if statement that says uh, if we've exceeded any boundary of our paddles. And here's what I mean by that. I'm going to draw a paddle here, and excuse my terrible drawing, but here is our paddle. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually divide our paddle. All right. So I'm going to make a center line like this and like this. 
we know that the center here of our paddle is say P1X comma P1Y, which is great. We can't just say if the ball hits P1X or P1Y because that's literally just the center. We wanna collide with any part of this paddle. So I need to know where its outer boundaries are. Well, if our total height is 100 and our total width is 200, I'm sorry, not 200, if our total width is 20, well then we can figure out exactly where our edges are. If I divide 100 by two, that means that this is 50 and this is 50, and same for the bottom, this would be 10 and this would be 10. So that means that this top wall here, this top wall would be P1Y minus 50, and the bottom wall would be P1Y plus 50 because P1Y is right in the middle, 50 pixels here gets me to the edge. So P1Y plus 50 is down here, P1Y minus 50 is here. This would be P1X plus 10, and this would be P1X minus 10. Now, if our ball, change my color again, if our ball is greater than this, but less than this, that means somewhere in between these two walls. And if it's greater than this, but less than this, it's somewhere in our paddle. So that means that our ball is somewhere in our paddle. It's greater than here and less than here and greater than here and less than here. We've hit our paddle. And we're gonna use that to make an extensive if statement. And the cool thing is, because our paddles are the same size for P1 and P2, all we have to do is change our P1s to twos our P1, uh, and that's gonna actually work for both player one and player two. So basically we're gonna have a lot of copying and pasting here. Now, here's what that actually looks like. Let's make a new little sub if statement called collide with paddles. And we'll start with P1. So if P, if ball X is greater than or equal to P1 X minus 10 and and ball X is less than or equal to P1 X plus 10, that means that we're somewhere within the width of our paddle, and end, ball y is greater than or equal to p1y minus 50, and end, ball y is less than or equal to p1y plus 50. This means hit player. And if we hit our player, that means that we want to change our horizontal direction because our paddles, our paddles are on the horizontal axes. So we're going to say ball direction x equals ball direction x times negative 1. That's going to change direction. Close, hit, p1. Now the cool thing is I can copy this whole if statement. So let's check to make sure it works. Uh, of course, we're going towards P2. So let's change our X direction to be negative one in global. So now we can go towards player one and let's see if we bounce off the paddle. And we do. So now that we know that that works, let's copy this if statement. And for player two, I'm just gonna change my P1s to P2s. The ball is the same, the size is the same, the direction is the same, literally the ones become twos. And now we should be able to play a little game of Pong. Let's see. There we go. Now in the next video, we're going to make our scoreboard for when the ball actually goes off the edge like so.